Thank you. We shall start. If you look at page nine, can I have attention, please? Thank you. Do we use the regression line? Can I have attention? Too much talking. Thank you. When do we use regression line on y on x or x on y? We have done example five. We very quickly flip to example five. There was a very clear cut independent or control variable. Example five. You flip back example five where x was the time. You flip back. See example five. Where when you did the experiment, you control the time at specific time equal to five minutes, you see what is the value of y, the amount of chemical. Six minutes, you see seven minutes, you control. At a point, you see what is the value of y. Very clearly, there was a control variable or an independent variable. Now we see it's a Then we got this whether you are required to find x below y or y below x, you use the same regression line y on x, assuming x is very independent. The moment you have a clear cut independent, just use one regression line. That's the answer. Now, example 6 is a bit different. We have not finished example 6, but you know, example 6 just before this page, just before this uh, uh, quick summary. Example 6 is about length and breadth. Look here. There was no clear cut independent or control variable. So if you realize if we need to find we need to we needed to find x given y, we use the regression line x on y. This is what we are talking about here. Here. Example six part one. If you want to find y given x, you'll use another regression line. See example six part two. So we're going to very quickly finish off example six part two. Because now we want to find y given an x value. So this time you have to do a separate, do your regression line all over again. You know, you're going to repeat the step this time, you know, very carefully. We're going to swap the L1 and L2 different from here. Then you get a different question line. You read carefully, I'm not going to go through how you do it, okay? Okay, you read off, you will get these values. And then all you need to do is to substitute x equals to 22.3. Notice that your intermediate step, I have 5SF here. This one is 5SF. This is 5SF. To get a, a good value for your final value of um, X. All okay. Okay. It clearly illustrates the flow chart. Very easy to use. Follow. Okay. Just one example more. If you go on to example seven, it's another example of a very clear cut independent or control variable for example seven. Example seven uses the data in example one. May I then uh, refer all of us back to example one data, which is here. Here, yes. Your x and y here. This is example one data. And if I may refer all of us, the researcher in example one wants to find out, wants to investigate how the birth weight depends on the BM. So this BMI 
is now a clear cut in the independent of control variable. So the x is a clear cut independent of control variable. When you collect data, you decide the BMI and then measure the birth weight of the child. So here, there is a very clear cut independent or control variable, which is the pregnant mother's BMI. So if that is the case, then if you look at a flow chart and something in, in, uh, in page on page nine, then you look at the right hand side, clear cut as an independent or control variable, you only use one type of regression line, which is y on x. Because x is a control variable, y independent. So I'm not going to go through. If you key into your GC, you get these values. I'm going to go a bit faster, okay? I'm going to key into your GC, you get these values. When I mean the values, means these values now, huh? the one on top. Okay? You will get these. Whether you want to find y given x or x given y, you use this same one. Follow? You look at the flow chart, it's on the right hand side of the flow chart, there is a clear cut independent of control variable. All you need to do is to substitute. Okay? When x is 15, you are going to substitute 15 inside here. Alright? So, this one quite easy, huh? just copy, okay? Just take note that I use 5 SF figure. 5SF. Okay. Uh, to calculate the value of x given y, use the same one. You just do the appropriate things. You substitute x, y is 3.33. You get a value. Finally, you should get 46. Mm -hmm. Again, your intermediate step you have to be as far as. Am I going through too fast? All okay? This space all right? Can okay, no? Good. Quite easy, yeah, really quite easy. Actually, the rest of examples are quite easy. I'm going to go faster. Example 8. Cannot, cannot. Sorry, sorry. Too fast, huh? If you're not talking, means can you know, right? Can you move, right? Okay, good. Come. Example 8. Let's look at context. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see video now. Not now, not now. Oh, wait. This is a score obtained during Christmas. X is a score obtained during Christmas. Y is the score obtained in the summer. Calculate x bar, y bar. Thank you. No need to calculate by hand. Just calculate. Just key into a GC. Enter. Enter these values. If you have one, and then you have two. Your calculator should be able to calculate x bar. Okay. So calculate. Sketch the above data and plot the points x bar, y bar. So, already given to you, so I'm not going to um, explain. You should be able, you should be able to keep your GC and use the GC. Uh, scatter data, set plot to um, draw your scatter diagram. Now, x bar y bar is here. Next. Thank you. If this talking goes on, I not only cannot show you.
part three. Find the equation of the estimated regression line of y on x. So the question very specific. Y on x, we just do y on x. Okay? So if you key in your GC, your regression line should look like this. This is the three SF figure. It should look like this. You're supposed to draw this line on the graph. The most important thing you've got to note is this. The regression line of y on x and x on y, whichever, should pass, pass through x bar, y bar. This one very important. Covered. I've said it before. So when you when you sketch your line, when you add your line in, your line firstly must have a gradient 0 0.722, roughly 0 0.722 like that. Roughly, okay, every 10 increase by 7.2. Then you have a gradient 0.722. And make sure it must pass through this one. Let's go. Follow. So, it should look like this. Thank you. A 10th student obtained a mark of 70 in the Christmas exam. So, This one, uh, the graph. Uh. Why? Uh? In general, oh, okay, 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 okay. You only, uh. the rest, or the back, okay? No, okay. Oh, okay, thank you. Okay. Sorry, uh, I must check, my uh, right? I cannot. Oh. Like that, can? Okay, good. Okay, let's move on. A 10th student. Score a mark of 70. This is Christmas. This is X is 70. Yeah? You want to find Y. Correct? Given, given X, find Y. So, since you already have the regression line of Y on X, you just say this. You just substitute. When X is 70, Y is. You substitute into your equation 15.830. 0 0.7228 times 70 equals to 66. 